<laughs> Down in one. Down in one. All the way, yes. <laughs> That's me. Go on, Harry. I can't. I, I don't like cider. Do it. Do it. Do it. Come on, Harry. Come on. Do it. Down in one. 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 Sister Benedette. Well, back to your own rooms then. Did you remember to bring in the garden tools, Catherine? No, sister, I'm sorry. I will do it now. Make sure that you do. I don't think we have money to burn. <laughs> Why is she taking so long? Should we go and see if she wants some help? Come on. You know, the longer I do this, the more I feel like I'm turning into Mr. Ben. <laughs> Tony Ben. No, you clambered the kid's cartoon. Ah, no, don't like this. What, you think it's too tight? You volunteered. Well, it was with a bit of research. He says not to you up as a priest and smuggling you into a convent. You're not smuggling me in anywhere. I'll go in the front door like any real fake priest would do. The bishop then places his hands on your head, the ancient symbol of the coming of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of power and love, of authority and service. The bishop then says a solemn prayer of consecration, asking God to grant you the dignity of the priesthood and renew his spirit of holiness in your heart. I'm going to burn in hell for this. We're doing it with a full dispensation of the cardinal, although obviously he wouldn't give it to us in writing. Oh, so I'm supposed to just take your word for it? How can you doubt the word of a priest? Oh, come on, mate. You know, it would help a great deal if you just take this a bit more seriously. You know me. Yeah, sometimes I wonder. Sometimes I think this is exactly what you need. What, stained glass and a couple of dancing Madonnas? Faith. I had faith. And for blinding me obvious reasons, I lost it. Well, that's the thing about faith. It's there for the good days and the bad. Well, it wasn't just a bad day. I know that. <sighs> Just remember, you're in a place of God. Don't let me down. That means you can't take confession, you cannot conduct marriage ceremonies, and you can't bury the dead. You know, Marty, sometimes you're a real killjoy. <sighs> Mrs. Harvey, can you think of any reason why Claire might have... Claire did not kill herself. She wouldn't. She was secure in her faith. It's just not Claire. Did you ever talk about a friend of hers, Josephine? Yes. They were very close. Mrs. Harvey, 
Do you think there might have been anything more to their relationship? Claire told me she found something in there that she couldn't find out here. Well, that's great. But she didn't kill herself because of it. Mum, if you're there, will you pick up? Sorry I couldn't be there for your birthday. You know how it is, souls to save. <laughs> Listen, when are you coming up? I really want you to meet Claire and... That was the last time she called. If I was a religious man, I'd pray to God that she's OK. As I'm not, all I can do is hope, but it's been six weeks. Look, please find her. I have to go. He doesn't mean to be abrupt. Mr. Furlow is Josephine's stepfather. Look, this isn't about my husband. That message was left three days before she went missing. Does that sound like someone who's about to run away? Hello there. Father Murphy, is it? That isn't it. Sister Bernadette. Sister Mary. Hello. Police have already handled this most efficiently. So I really don't know what the Cardinal thinks he'll achieve by sending you here. However, I accept that you have a job to do. As long as you accept that we also have our jobs to do, then we'll get on fine. Fair enough. Murphy. Thank you, Bernadette. So, where did the Cardinal get you from? Belfast. Ah. Well, let me paint you a picture, Father Murphy. Sister Josephine chose to join this convent after working as a volunteer in a gap year in Africa. Initially, her assessments were very good. And then I'm told that she struck up a very close relationship with Sister Claire. Well, sometimes these things happen places like this. Sister Claire, perhaps feeling guilty or confused, commits suicide. Sister Josephine runs away. She isn't the first, she won't be the last. Now, this is all hugely regrettable, and yet I don't understand why the Cardinal feels the need to send you here. Because we can't be certain it was suicide until we get the coroner's verdict. She may have jumped into the river, she may have fallen, or she may have been pushed. The police have exhausted every avenue in their search for her, and it's only out of regard for the sanctity of the church that they haven't waded in here. With... Yes, 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 very convincing. But let us speculate, perhaps, on an alternative reason for your being here. You will find fault with this or that. You will criticize, devalue, and deflate the tremendous work that Sister Bernadette has done here. You will compile a negative report, and Cardinal Gray will have an excuse to close down the convent and sell it off to property developers. I'm here to find out what happened to Josephine and Claire. Is that all, Bishop Noonan? Should we be worried? Ah. Sister Bernadette will protect this place with every bone in her body. She'll keep this Father Murphy on a tight rein. This is business, Bishop. We have to protect what we have. Yes, it's going to be fine. Good, because if this comes out, we'll both be crucified. It's really quite comfortable, isn't it? This is a convent, Father, not a gulag. We're not living in the Dark Ages now, you know. Mm. So, you go to bed, everything's fine and dandy. Next morning, Claire is dead and Josephine's gone. 
Nothing happened that day? No upsets, nothing that stands out? The only difference that day was they both came with me to Blair House. You know the private school? We do some outreach work there. I teach religious instruction and Josephine and Claire help me out. But nothing untoward happened. They seemed perfectly happy. In the evening, they were in their rooms. I said goodnight to them. And then... Well... Here we are. It was the day before we broke up. They came, they taught, they left. And this isn't a Catholic school. Good Lord, no. There are people here from all over the world. So when it comes to religious instruction, we have to rotate. Maybe Sister Bernadette one week, maybe a rabbi the next. We have several Buddhists. Right, so they get to appreciate a lot of different perspectives. I think the boys despise them all equally. They were just very nice young women. Very personable. A credit to their... Well, I don't think half the boys even guessed they were nuns. No boys coming. Uh, boys. These are DCs Thompson and Carter. Lads. I want to know if any of you spoke to Josephine Furler or Claire Harvey while they were here. Perhaps you saw them outside of school. Maybe talking to someone. Or maybe they said something that might mean nothing to you but could be vitally important to us. All right, John. How you doing? Fine, Father. Good day, isn't it? You, um, you've been working here years, John, haven't you? Mm. Must have a few strange stories to tell, eh? No. You'd have been here the night the girls disappeared, though, yeah? Did you notice anything odd about it? Nothing at all? Nothing I noticed. Did me rounds as usual about 7.30 and then crashed out in front of the telly with a beer. Heard nothing, saw nothing. Their rooms were next to yours, right? Uh, was there anything different about them that night? You didn't notice them upset or anything? Or maybe they were being extra secretive or arguing? Mm, no, Father. They were always in each other's rooms. And at night, sometimes, I'd hear Catherine going into them. Catherine? Catherine, she's scared to the dark. Sometimes she would sleep in with either Claire or Josephine. She was there that night. Sister Bernadette told them off, I think, but I couldn't really hear. Catherine? The Lord is my love and my refuge. In him I place my trust. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my arms for battle, who prepares my hands for war. He is my Seeking love. divine inspiration. He is my song. Tell me about Catherine. Catherine? Catherine has not been with us for very long. She's of a nervous disposition and is under medical supervision. She had a difficult time in Africa. Why didn't you tell me she was with Josephine and Claire on the last night? Oh, so she was in Josephine's room for a little while that night. She left some tools out, so I sent her to pick them up before she went back to her own room. She's very upset by all this. I don't know what she could usefully contribute to you. Are you saying I can't talk to her? I'm saying you'll be lucky if you get two words.
uh, lads. You all right, son? Ah. <laughs> so? And, um... Thank you. Uh, <laughs> 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 That's my boy. I can Catherine, do. settle down, settle down now. Settle. No. Get her medication, please. Shush, I've got you. Shush, shush, shush. Is she like this often? When she first came, she was like it every night. But it's improved gradually. I think the stressful business with Claire and Joseph, you set her off again. Shush. Now, let's get you back to bed. Come no, on. no, please. I was sleeping Joseph in his room. Oh, very well. Come on, this way. Come on. Yeah. It's all right. Oh, all right. Come on, darling. Let's eat breakfast. Morning, Father. Good result. Yeah. Could you pass me that one? Hi. You scared the pants off me last night, metaphorically speaking, with the screaming. I'm sorry. What's all right? Did uh, you get back to sleep okay? Must have been a terrible dream. I don't remember. It's a good job I do. You were screaming about death and someone trying to kill you. I told you, I do not remember. But you remember the last time you saw Josephine and Claire. That's why you're having the nightmares again, isn't it? Catherine? Anna? Sister Brophy needs help with the lunch. Catherine. Do you think Josephine ran away? Catherine? Thompson, smoke. The coroner's recorded an open verdict on Claire. She was definitely alive when she hit the water, but the fact of the matter is she took a serious blow to the head, and no one can explain how it got there. Apart from the person who did it. Anything turn up on Catherine? She doesn't appear to have been interviewed first time round. Can't find anything under her convent name or her Ugandan surname. Was it? Banya. Banya. There's no mention of her in Bernadette's statement either. You think they're trying to keep her offside for a reason? I don't know. Might be she's a few Marleys missing from the back. See you there. Bit of a spring in the old step there, sister. <laughs> it's not an Olympic year, is it? <laughs> One tries not to give in to the pain. Here, give me those. Oh, thank you. Well, I can see I'm not going to outrun you. So fire away, Father. I remember Colombo. Uh -huh. How did John end up here? Sister Bernadette. John was in a terrible state after his wife left. He lost everything. He lost his way. Sister Bernadette took him in. She thought a job would put him back on his feet. And it did. What about Catherine? Is she one of Bernadette's lost causes? She's very protective of her. We all are. She had a lot of problems when she arrived. And as you've seen, she still does. I heard she was thick as thieves with Josephine and Claire. They took her under their wing. Did you know them well? Claire, I didn't have so much to do with. But Josephine, well, I used to handle the accounts here because before I became a nun, I worked in a bank. But I was training Josephine to take over from me. My eyes, you see. And how was she doing? She had a good head for figures, if she applied herself. Well, there can't have been that much involved, a place this size. Oh, you'd be surprised. Sister Bernadette always insists the books are in good order before they're sent to the bishop. Thank you. 
your mysterious van. It's a fleet vehicle hired out to a courier service. They're a bit reluctant to divulge their client, so I went right there and wielded the big stick. Eventually got it out of them. Schmidt Hessen Pharmaceuticals. These Schmidt Hessen Pharmaceuticals? I've seen their name in the convent. But this farmer's making a collection. Find out where you can, eh? Right. Our traditional harvesting methods are still cheaper, despite the bloody ban on CJD countries. I'm not even sure if they have cows in Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> We're still talking higher purity and greater consistency with synthetic production. And the margin for error is larger. Well, it's negligible in both cases, John. I wish I could say the same about your expense claims. <laughs> Be right there. Mr. Brody, I'm sorry. I have the police here inquiring about one of our courier contracts. I've checked the file, but it refers all inquiries to you. Sorry to keep you. It's two of you. Not just a dodgy tail like then. <laughs> Get your coffee? No, thank you. Probably right. Not good. Not good at all. What's the big mystery? There's no mystery, Mr. Brody. I seem to be pursuing a line of inquiry. If you don't mind my asking, into what exactly? As I'm sure you're aware, Schmidt Hessen's very conscious of its public relations. Mr. Brody, what exactly is Schmidt Hessen's relationship with North Lavington Convent? Mr. Uh, Detective Carter. We donate non prescription drugs, first aid equipment, vitamins, a whole list of things to help with our overseas missionary work. We don't make a song and dance about it. It's not our style. But if you go to check, you'll find that we at Schmidt Hessen are one of the biggest donors to charity in the country. Mr. Brody would have us believe that Schmidt Hessen are the patron saints of charitable donation. And do we believe, Mr. Brody? Well, he smiled a lot and offered us coffee. I thought not. Suppose they're running secret drug trials. <laughs> what, it turns them into killer nuns? But maybe it makes them suicidal or depressed. Or, Jesus, I don't know, psychotic. Banya was granted asylum in the UK four years ago from Uganda. Born in Luero province. Oh, what would that be? 35 years ago. 35? 35 years, four months and three days, if you're interested. Why? Is there a problem? If she's 35, the Pope's a Protestant. This isn't, uh, well, it is. Um, hello. Do you know what Curiosity did, Father? Well, it's open to interpretation. I came here to find out what happened to Josephine and Claire. I think it's connected to this. I think you're involved in secret drug trials for Schmidt Hessen. Drug trials? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what this sinister concoction is? No. What did it taste of, Father? Was it by any chance postmenopausal nun's urine? What? Pee, Father? P. 
Pete. Pete. Several years ago, we were financially stretched and the Cardinal was unwilling to support us. We were approached out of the blue by a pharmaceutical company with rather an astonishing proposal. They would sponsor our convent and support a number of our overseas charities if we would donate our urine. You see, Father, thousands of women, tens of thousands, have difficulty reproducing. Fertility specialists treat them with hormones extracted from human urine. And naturally, the purer the urine, the better the hormone. And I need hardly say, there's nothing purer than the urine of a 60-year-old nun. Does Bishop Noonan know about this? Oh, yes. He not only secured the funding for this, but he also manages the funding for our overseas projects. And he made sure that the company looks after all our medical needs, so that people like Catherine, whose many disturbing ailments, could benefit. This is a business, Father. And it is necessarily a confidential one. But I assure you, it has nothing to do with Josephine and Claire. Does the Cardinal really need to know? Sister Brevy, I believe this is contaminated. Would you dispose of it, please? Thank you. Time. What does this go to? Oh, it's the old priest's hole, but John keeps it locked up. So if you want to take a look, you'll have to speak to him. John, it's Father Murphy. I was wondering, do you have a key for the locked door in the storeroom? John? John? Nine percent. Healthy. Our jack of all trades is also an exponent of one handed voyeurism. You checked him out, didn't you? No convictions, not in the register. But I can dig deeper if you like. Yeah, do that. Where it goes. Father, I don't think you should do that. You're probably right. Thank <laughs> you. 
What is this? Presby. What do you mean? Another sideline? What? There's enough dope here to... Well, there's enough dope here full stop. Catherine, go and fetch Bishop Nolan. What? Go on. Quickly, here. I had no idea. Nobody but John's been down here for years. It couldn't be John. Nothing about her. the dope, fair enough, but not the girl. Not the girl, no. I like me dope. I grow a bit for myself. So what? It was you guys that said you'd turn a blind eye if we smoked it. <laughs> what sort of message is that? For the benefit of the tape, I'm showing Mr. Franklin Exhibit 1A. Ecstasy tablets. Cry those to you, John. Personal use. Come on, John. You're a little old for pills, aren't you? What's that supposed to mean? Well, maybe you slipped a few to Josephine. Well, she's young. She was attractive. Did you find her sexy, John? Uh, for God's sake, man, she's a nun. And even nuns get naked in the shower. Don't they, John? While we must make time to pray for the soul of our poor departed Josephine, you must understand that the police here want to talk to you all again. And I've assured them that you will give them your fullest cooperation. Let's do the best we can. What on earth is she doing? I don't know. Catherine! doing father if you go I go well, you're a nun if you kill yourself you're not gonna go to heaven are you you're gonna be hanging around purgatory forever and I know what that's like it's like Donna a day on a wet Wednesday so if you go I go I'll plead your case with the big man personally so well set oh, please bring it. Oh. Oh. you cannot help me let me try Josephine was my friend. Every friend I have, they die. Will you hear my confession? I can't. Do you believe in God, Carter? God? The big guy. A bit like Van Morrison, but not as grumpy. 
I don't know, Tommy. I've never really given it much thought. Josephine's results from her post-mortem confirmed she died the same day as Claire. Multiple skull fractures. And John Franklin's not going anywhere. His little weed farm's gonna keep him in custody for a while. But you're gonna love this. What? Turns out the convent receives less than a third of that money Schmidt Hessen pay out for the euro. What's the rest? Diverted. By a network of overseas banks and eventually to Bishop Noonan and Anthony Brody. Schmidt Hessen's financial director. Apparently, it's not common practice for a bishop to be so hands on with convent accounts, so we dug a little further. The convent passes most of the money it does receive back to Noonan for redistribution to charities abroad. And he creams off some of that as well. So, Noonan and Brody are up to their oxters in fraud. And Josephine just happens to have worked with the convent accounts. Say she spots the con, takes it to Bernadette. Bernadette takes it to Noonan, and Noonan panics. And persuades John to murder Claire, and probably Josephine. Or maybe he and Brody killed them. Pick them up and squeeze them. Tommy, arrest the bishop, and you're going to cause a shitstorm. Then a shitstorm it is. Because of CJD, there weren't a lot of other places for us to turn to. The Venezuelans knew that, they kept jacking the price up. The cost of shipping, the damage in transit. How did you meet Bishop Noonan? Well, we do charity work. Yeah, we do good things. We got talking. It wasn't deliberate, not at first. It was a kind of a grey area, whether it was illegal. You know, we had discussions. It just snowballed. <laughs> yes, snowballed into your account. This is fraud, Your Grace, and it's not just dipping your fingers in the collection plate. It's all here on paper. Josephine did the convent accounts, and you defrauded them out of thousands of pounds, and she winds up dead. It doesn't take a genius to work what out. What sort of man do you think I am? Catherine Banyer is dead. No Has been for 18 time. months. You were right about her story not adding up. Seems your young novice is not who she says she is. You're travelling incognito today, Father? I'm sorry. Sorry? Is that all you can say? You've lived with us, prayed with us. Is it all lies? Yes, sister, it's all lies. Just like Catherine. Who is she? Her name is Sarah Okumu. Where have you been hiding her? When she was a child. Sarah was stolen from her home by a rebel group called the Lord's Resistance Army. She was raped repeatedly, used as a slave and forced to fight as a soldier. She's seen horrors we cannot begin to comprehend. After three years, she was rescued and brought to our mission. She was in a dreadful state. We had trouble getting her a visa. We knew Catherine's asylum had been granted. And then she died in an accident. So we passed Sarah off as Catherine. That's why I hid her from the police. She's frightened of being discovered and sent home. And that's why she jumped. No. There's more to it than that. She knows what happened to Josephine and Clara, I'm sure of it. They don't know when she'll be able to talk. I'm going to wait here. OK, what about Noonan and Brody? We've got them for the money, but we still haven't got anything solid to connect them to the murders. Well, hang on to them as long as you can, but keep talking to John. Put pressure on him. Was Catherine with Claire and Josephine that night? 
I told you I didn't see them. Why do you keep asking me about them? Two young women are dead. Josephine's body was discovered in a tunnel that only you have access to. A tunnel that you visit on a daily basis. Stop pissing us about, John! Either you put it there or you have a pretty good idea who did! Now talk! I locked up as usual and went back to my room. It's only a bit of harmless fun, you know. And then the boys called. Boys? Don't get the wrong idea. I'm not a dealer. Just make a bit on the side by selling to the boys. Weed. Occasional pills. More money than sense, those lads. What lads? And, uh, have you seen our specials menu? John left. <laughs> then we went for a smoke. Decided we'd look around the convent. Why? Because we're off our faces. We're just having a laugh. <laughs> Good to see if he's still here. It really didn't mean any harm, sir. To be honest, John, he, he kind of scared us. We weren't going to go back. He scared you? He was arguing with one of the nuns. A black girl. Think of it now. She was the one that killed herself, wasn't she? Luckily, she didn't succeed. You're not going to tell our parents, are you, sir? We really didn't mean any harm. We will deal with it later, Damien. Detective. officer. I'm going to do everything in my power to stop you being sent back to Uganda unless you want to go. Do you understand? I want justice for Josephine and Claire. And I think you were with them on the night they died. Am I right? I should have died. The big fella had other ideas. He made you bounce. I'm sorry. Just tell us everything you know. Mm -hmm. I collected the tools. I felt I was not alone. He came at me. I tried to defend myself, but he forced me to go with him. You tell anyone about this. You're dead. Catherine, where are you? Shh. Catherine. I heard voices. Catherine. I tried to warn them. Catherine. I should have been the one who died. Stay with her. I'm going to the school. Where are they? Harry and Damien are in the prefect's room. Jensen's in the library. Get Jensen. <laughs> we heard a scream, and she was just floating away. <laughs> you stop her crying. <laughs> Detective, no. shut up! The Jensen said, if Rob was dead, it was better for us they all were. <laughs> She's dead. Jensen, what are you doing? Jensen! But you couldn't find Catherine? No. 
we searched, but Jensen made us hide the other one in the tunnels under the convent. The next few days, we expected to be arrested, but nothing happened. She mustn't have said anything. Then, then what? You came to the school. Then you said I had to get to her before she opened her mouth. Then when we heard she jumped from the roof, we thought she was dead. The Jensen said we were safe. He's not in the building. Where's Jensen now, Harry? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.